So our last video covered how to do cross-chain swaps on ThorSwap using your Binance chain assets like BNB and BUSD. And this tutorial is going to show you how you can earn yield by providing to ThorChain liquidity pools using ThorSwap. Let's first just connect our wallet. I'll be using XDeFi, which is a multi-chain wallet for all chains in this example. You could use multiple wallets at the same time, depending on which chains you need to connect. You could also use a key store wallet for every chain as well. And we do have some separate videos on setting up wallets such as XDeFi. So let's connect our XDeFi. I'm only going to connect chains that I will be using. So I'll just connect BNB and I will connect ThorChain because I'll be doing some stuff with Rune in this video that I will explain. So let's connect that. We can check out all the pools on the dashboard view. So down here, we'll see all the pools and the listed APY. These are averages over the last seven days, so they definitely can change depending on how active the pools have been. To put it simply, every asset is paired in a liquidity pool with Rune, which is the asset of ThorChain, and these pools are always 50% whatever asset and 50% rune, which is essentially what allows you to swap between say BNB and Bitcoin. It's going through rune on the back end. So then to be a liquidity provider, you are filling up that pool and you are earning fees based on the swap activity in that pool. So as a liquidity provider for say BUSD or BNB, you would always be exposed to 50% BUSD and 50% ThorChain Rune or 50% BNB and 50% Rune. And as the prices of the assets vary, it's constantly rebalancing between the two. So you have to want to have exposure to both assets and then you'll be earning yield as you provide that liquidity. So we can go to add liquidity from here or we can go to the deposit button over there, but let's first just do a BNB liquidity add. So by default, it's showing me BNB plus Rune and I would add an equivalent amount of the two assets. So for example, $1,000 worth of BNB and $1,000 worth of Rune to start that liquidity pool position. However, I do have the option to only add from a single side. However, on the back end, this is still going to be the same as adding both. Just think of this as a convenient step. You're still being exposed 50% to Rune, even if you add from just BNB. But in this case, you would deposit just BNB and end up withdrawing just BNB. But for the whole time you're in the pool, you're exposed to both assets. So you can end up with potentially a lot more or less of BNB, depending on how the two assets change in price differently. So let's just add asymmetrically from BNB only. I'm adding half a BNB. So think of this as half this value being swapped to Rune and then entering the pool. That is essentially what is happening or at least how your exposure is going to look. So let's add this liquidity and confirm this. Then it's being pushed to our wallet to sign the transaction and confirm this. Then it's pending and just wait for that to confirm. And a few seconds later, we've successfully added our BNB to the pool. We can check on this position under liquidity We'll see our position here, our pool share, our percent of the total pool, what we initially added, what we've withdrawn so far, and some other stats. You can get a much more detailed breakdown of your position over time on Thor Yield, and we have a separate video showing how to keep track of your positions. Let's take a quick look at Thor Yield. And we just added this, so of course, nothing has really happened yet, but you'll be able to watch the breakdown over time right here. And since we added this from only one side, we can view this position as if we added from two sides, which is a bit more realistic as to what is really happening. So we're really exposed to this much rune and this much BNB, even though we added the 0.5 BNB initially, this is what is going to be rebalancing over time. So for example, if BNB goes up much more than rune, we're actually selling a bit of BNB and accumulating more rune. If Rune is going up more than BNB, then we'll end up with less Rune and some more BNB. Sometimes if the assets move very differently, you can experience something called impermanent loss, which in very simple terms is a loss due to that rebalancing such that you would have been better off just holding. And a really cool thing about ThorChain is that they offer impermanent loss protection, and this accrues 1% protection per day until you have full protection at 100 days, which means after 100 days, my minimum withdrawal would be worth the same as what you're seeing here right now. So 27.9 rune and 0.25 BNB. 
In reality, I would withdraw 50-50, so that might be more or less of one asset, but worst case, I would be withdrawing an equivalent value to this split that was initially put in. And just to be super clear, that's based on after the rebalancing, even if you go in asymmetrically from one side, you're protected from the 50-50 start point. So let's say it's been some time and hopefully our position has gone well and we're ready to withdraw this. You would just simply click withdraw. You can do a partial withdraw if you want, which does not reset your impermanent loss protection, or you can just withdraw 100% of it. We'll see the transaction fee is in BNB because this is only a BNB side transaction and we can just withdraw, confirm, and sign it in our wallet. While that's going through, let's do a symmetrical liquidity pool position. So let's actually swap to some Rune. And for this one, we'll do BUSD and Rune. So let's do a quick swap. We'll take the rest of our BNB and we'll swap that over to Rune. You can see our withdraw just went through. So our BNB from, from that withdraw is back in our wallet. So for our swap for our symmetrical one, let's swap this BNB to some Rune and sign that transaction and wait to receive our Rune. So we'll go back to deposit and our swap went through. So we've got our Rune. So let's deposit BUSD and the equivalent amount of Rune. So if I just do all of this Rune, then I'll see an equivalent amount of BUSD and I can see expected pool share and fee before I go in here. One thing to note for a symmetrical ad is that this will be a rune fee to withdraw it in the future. So if you deposit all of your rune, then you will need a 0 0.02 rune fee to withdraw it in the future. So either leave yourself a little or you can always do another small swap in the future. So let's add this liquidity, confirm and sign. So because we're doing two different transactions on two different chains here, you have to sign for the BUSD to go in and you have to sign from the Rune to go in. So this first transaction is signing for the BUSD to go in. Confirm that. And then the second deposit of sending the Rune in for 0 0.02 fee. So confirm that as well. And if you ever have an issue where one side goes in, but the other side fails, then you would just find a pending liquidity position here under liquidity, and you would just simply have to finish the deposit for the second side. So once that's deposited, it shows up here as well as under liquidity. And then now you're in the pool and you're earning yield on 50-50 rune and BUSD. And one last tip, but on Thor yield, you can go to the LP calculator. And here you can simulate what would happen to your position over time, what your earnings will look like, depending on what you expect will happen. So for example, if we think the prices are going to stay the same, the APY is going to stay the same and we'll stay in for a year. And we added, let's say $100 of BUSD and the equivalent of Rune then we'll see our predicted earnings over that year time period. So this is a great tool to play with before you enter the pool. And we do have a much more in-depth video going over this calculator. Also, these examples were just BUSD and BNB, but this is the same process for any asset on ThorSwap on any of the chains, including some of the other BEP2 Binance chain assets like BEP2 Bitcoin, BEP2 ETH, and a couple of others. So the same steps would apply for any of these assets. And that's all there is to it to start earning yield as a liquidity provider using ThorSwap.